a luxury high-rise in the heart has been dubbed the Leaning Tower of San Francisco after the $350 million building began to sink and satellite images have now revealed just how bad the problem is. The Millennium Tower, which stands 58 stories high, has already sunk 16 inches since it was completed seven years ago. The European Space Agency Sentinel-1 satellites have now shown that the Millennium Tower skyscraper in the center of San Francisco is sinking by a few centimeters a year. Data from the Sentinel-1 satellites acquired between 22 February 2015 and 20 September 2016 show that Millennium Tower in San Francisco is sinking by about 40 millimeters a year in the line of sight the direction that the satellite is looking at the building. This translates into a vertical subsidence of almost 50 millimeters a year. Assuming no tilting, researchers say, studying the city is helping scientists to improve the monitoring of urban ground movements, particularly for sub Silence hotspots in Europe. Completed in 2009, the 58 story Millennium Tower has recently been showing signs of sinking and tilting. Although the cause has not been pinpointed, it is believed that the movements are connected to the supporting pals not firmly resting on bedrock. Even more worryingly, the tower has begun to tilt, with a 6 inch lean at the top of the building. And engineers hard to assess the problem say it shows no immediate sign of stopping. To probe these subtle shifts, Scientists combine multiple radar scans from the Copernicus Sentinel-1 twin satellites of the same area to detect subtle surface changes down to millimeters. The technique works well with buildings because they better reflect the radar beam. It is also useful for pinpointing displacement hotspots over large areas thanks to Sentinel-1's broad coverage and frequent visits. Working with ESA, the team from NORAD, PPO Labs and Geological Survey of Norway have also mapped other areas in the water center. San Francisco Bay Area that are moving. These include buildings along the earthquake-prone Hayward Fault as well as subsidence of the newly reclaimed land in the San Rafael Bay. An uplift of the land was detected around the city of Pleasanton, possibly from the replenishment of groundwater following a four-year drought that ended in 2015. European cities experience similar subsidence, and the San Francisco study is helping because it contains a multitude of features. For example, the area around Oslo train station in Norway's reclaimed land. Newer buildings, such as the nearby Opera House, have proper foundation into bedrock, but the older parts of the station experience severe subsidence. Experience and knowledge gained within the ESA Scientific Exploitation of Operational Missions program give us strong confidence that Sentinel-1 will be a highly versatile and reliable platform for operational deformation monitoring in Norway and worldwide, said John Dills from the Geological Survey of Norway. The studies of San Francisco and Oslo are paving the way for moving from targeted case studies to a nationwide or even continental scale land deformation service. ESA says the Copernicus Sentinel-1 mission is, for the first time, making it possible to launch operational national deformation mapping services, said Dag Anders Mildestad from the Norwegian Space Center. The open data policy and regular coverage plan of Copernicus promise cost-efficient and reliable services. In Norway, we have already initiated a framework project to provide nationwide basic deformation products to the public with a free and open data policy. Many other countries in Europe are also working towards setting up similar services, noted Dr. Muldestad. The Sentinel-1 twins provide radar vision for Europe's Copernicus Environment Monitoring Program. In addition to watching land movements, they fit numerous other services for monitoring Arctic sea ice, routine sea ice mapping, surveillance of the marine environment, mapping for forest, water and soil management, and mapping to support humanitarian aid and crisis situations. Pamela Buttery noticed something peculiar six years ago while practicing golf putting in her 57th floor apartment at the luxurious building. The ball kept veering to the same corner of her living room. Those were the first signs for residents of the sleek, mirrored high-rise that something was wrong. What concerns me most is the tilting, says Buttery, 76, a retired real estate developer. Is it safe to stay here? For how long? The tower has sunk 16 inches into the soft soil and landfill of San Francisco's crowded financial district, but it's not sinking evenly, which has created a 2-inch tilt at the base and a roughly 6-inch lean at the top. By comparison, Italy's famed Leaning Tower of Pisa is leaning more than 16 feet. But in a major earthquake fault zone, the Millennium Tower's structural problems have raised alarm and become the focus of a 
public scandal. Several documents involving the downtown building were leaked in recent weeks, including exchanges between the city's Department of Building Inspection and Millennium Partners. The developer, they show both sides knew the building was sinking more than anticipated before it opened in late 2009, but neither made that information public. In a February 2009 letter, a chief buildings inspector, Raymond Louis, wrote to the tower's engineering firm to express concerns about larger than expected settlements. He asked what was being done to stop the sinking and if the building's structural safety could be affected. De Simone consulting engineers replied that the building had already unexpectedly settled 8.3 inches, but the engineering firm concluded, It is our professional opinion that the structures are safe. City Supervisor Aaron Peskin, who has convened hearings on the matter at City Hall, asked Louis why the building was then certified safe for occupancy. We felt they had it under control, replied Louis, now employed in San Francisco's Public Works Department. He did not elaborate. City officials, owners of the building's high-end apartments, its developers and politicians are arguing over who is to blame. Meanwhile, key questions remain. When is this building going to stop sinking? Asked Jerry Dodson. An attorney and engineer who paid $2.1 million in 2009 for his two-bedroom apartment on the 42nd floor. That's something that no one has been able to answer. On the sidewalks outside the Millennium Tower, engineers last month started working to figure out why the building keeps sinking and if there is a way to fix it. But the process, which involves drilling deep holes and testing soil samples, is expected to take several months. The geotechnical engineer leading the operation, Pat Shire, said existing data indicates the tower might sink between 24 to 31 inches in total, but nobody knows for sure. When the Millennium Tower opened, it became a haven for the city's well-heeled, and 419 Albanian Lex apartments quickly sold out. Tenants have included former San Francisco 49er Joe Montana, late venture capitalist Tom Perkins and Giants outfielder Hunter Pence. The building has a 75-foot indoor lap pool, a health club and spa, an in House Cinema and a restaurant and wine bar run by celebrity chef Michael Mina. Penthouses have sold for more than $10 million. The tower's troubles are apparent in its five-floor underground garage, where Porsches and Lamborghinis sit near walls bearing floor-to-ceiling cracks, many bracketed by stress gauges to measure growth. Meanwhile, accusations and lawsuits are piling up. Dodson and other residents blame developers for what they say is a flawed design. The tower's foundation, for instance, you uses piles driven 60 to 90 feet into landfill, rather than the pricier option of going down at least 240 feet to bedrock. Millennium Partners maintains its design is safe and says many San Francisco high-rises have similar foundations. We did this building the right way, Chris Jeffries, a founding partner at Millennium Partners, told a news conference. The building is 100% safe. Jeffries blames the building's problems on an adjacent construction site where a city rail terminal is being built. He says the Trans Bay Joint Powers Authority, the public agency building the $4.5 billion transit hub, dug a 60-foot hole to create a dry construction site and pumped out millions of gallons of groundwater that wound up compressing and weakening the soil under the Millennium Tower. Trans Bay says the tower's inadequate foundation is the sole cause of the excessive settlement and tilt. It released a statement saying the building had sunk 10 inches and started to lean before the agency broke ground in 2010. It has continued to sink at a rate of about one inch per year. We are all living there and wondering about our safety. Another resident, Nina Agabian, said at a recent city hall hearing, we've been told it's going to take years to solve this, and I don't think we have years. 